Hey guys, it's James from Creators, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use our Beetlebit cutting system. Now, everything that you're gonna see in the video with the Beetlebit system carries over to our Beetlebit mini system, which just comes with two grids and a smaller bar. So, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Beetlebit system, along with how to adjust your flying beetle, depending on the thickness of your glass. I'm gonna show you how to cut a few shapes, like squares and rectangles some diamonds and hexagons, and then an equilateral triangle, as well as this kind of teardrop shape. So let's get into it. Okay, so with the Beetlebit system, uh, when you buy the system, it does not come with the flying beetle and it doesn't come with waffle grids. So you'll have to get those separately. I would highly suggest getting a six pack of waffle grids. So that's gonna be what we're using today. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up these grids in a three by two orientation. Now, when you're setting up these waffle grids, um, you want to feel these cracks and make sure that one grid isn't sticking up a little higher than the other. And if so, you're just going to hit it a couple times to make it be smooth. And the reason why you want to do that is when you're sliding your glass around, you don't want it to get caught up on these cracks. So once you have your grids set up, you're going to go ahead and grab this compass piece here and you're going to put it towards the bottom of your grid. I like to go as far down as you can go without it hanging off a ridiculous amount. And once you have that plugged in, you're gonna take this pointer piece and plug this part right into the middle here, or excuse me, right in this one, I believe, so that it's just sitting above that compass piece. So you can go ahead and push down a little bit. Now that's good to go. What you're gonna wanna do next is grab your ruler and take this little red screw here and loosen it so that it can move freely like that. So then you're gonna go ahead and bring it over to your pointer piece. And I like to look at where this little pointer is hanging off at, if you have this going straight like that, over which grid it hangs off of, and then go about that far back and then plug your ruler in. All right, so now that it's in, you should be able to move it freely still and have it go up and down, but it'll stop up against the edge of your pointer piece. So the next piece you're gonna wanna grab is this 90 degree uh, angle piece, and you're gonna go ahead and look at where your pointer is pointing and follow these grids all the way down to about here on your grid. So you can go ahead and plug it in. Make sure that it's not cockeyed like that. You wanna make sure that it's these lines are facing straight towards you. This is the next piece you're gonna to wanna to plug in. So you're gonna take this pin here and plug it into the hole on the pointer piece and then just let the bar fall down onto this 90 degree angle piece. And now this bar is sitting at a perfect 90 degree angle. Okay, so to secure your ruler into the grid, you have this ruler holder and an oil well, and this has a little foam piece in here to put your oil in so you can uh, dip your cutter in to keep the wheel lubricated. So you're just gonna place one of these oil wells there and then test to make sure that the ruler stops up against it when you move it. Now you'll take this other piece and just plug it in on the other side. And now this ruler is locked in, but it can still move this way. Now we're gonna start getting to the more fun part you're gonna take your flying beetle and set it on your bar with this red piece on the right side. And you're gonna go ahead and look to see where this yellow pointer lines up with. And it will line up with one of these ribs on the grid. So you're gonna take your zero mark and put it right on that rib. And then make sure that this yellow pointer lines up perfectly with there because the yellow pointer on the flying beetle will dictate where your cutting head is gonna go. Now that your ruler is in place, you're gonna go ahead and make sure that your bar doesn't shift and tighten down this red screw. 
I would suggest using two hands, but my other hand is tied up right now. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and take a sheet of glass that you're wanting to cut and slide it under your bar. And you're gonna take your flying beetle and see if the cutting head comes down enough to hit the glass. So it's a little bit over the glass right now. So you're gonna take the Allen wrench that is gonna be on the back of your flying beetle and you're gonna take the cutting head out and just set that to the side. And you're just gonna slowly work it down. I'm just gonna do, so how this works is when you tighten the screw, it makes it go lower, which makes the cutting head go lower. And when you loosen the screw, it makes the screw come up, which also makes the cutting head come up. So I'm just gonna do about a half turn or so. Maybe, no, oh, that was closer to three quarters of a turn. But I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in and see now it's gonna hit my glass. But it seems like it's gonna be a little too abrasive, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it a little bit more. You don't wanna have it so that your cutting end is just slamming into the glass. You want it to just touch it enough to get it on there. Because what it does is it gets onto the glass and then falls back down. So this setup right here is actually all you need to start cutting strips if that's what you wanna do. So let's say I wanna cut a two inch strip I'm gonna go ahead and slide my glass into this ruler here and stop it at the two mark. Um, your beetle bit system comes with a super stop, actually two super stops. These also come with your beetle bit system and these are our omnidirectional stops. So it'll plug into your grid and you can move it any sort of way you want. So I'm gonna take a super stop I'm gonna plug it into my grid just a little before where I want it to stop, right? I'm gonna loosen this red screw so that it can move, and I'm gonna line it up so that it just stops right at this two inch mark. So now I'm gonna go ahead, score my glass. And you have a perfect two inch strip. So I can go ahead and cut more of those. If I want to. Now I'm going to show you how to cut a square. So you're going to take that strip of glass that you cut, and this is all relative. So if this strip is four inches or eight inches, all you have to do is just set it at a four inch line or the eight inch line, and it'll make a perfect four inch or eight inch square or whatever size you want. It's all relative. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed my glass into here. And it's gonna stop at this two inch line. I'm gonna go ahead and score it. And then run your score. So now you have a perfect two inch square. Next, I'm gonna show you how to cut a rectangle. This is pretty much the same thing as a square. All you have to do is take the super stop out, slide it back and then set it at whatever length you want. I'm gonna say a four inch a two inch by four inch rectangle. So you're gonna go ahead and tighten it at that four inch line. And you'll go ahead, feed your glass in, score it, and then run it. And now you have a two inch by four inch rectangle. Now we're gonna get into some more intricate pieces that you can cut. So this will be the equilateral triangle, the diamond, and the hexagon. So I'm gonna go ahead and take two of these tadpole angle adjusters, and you can plug one in on this side, and then plug one in on this side, but you're gonna pick your ruler up, and I like to clip this onto my ruler, and then watch it move to where I want it to cut. So for the diamonds, equilateral triangles, and hexagons, you're gonna wanna cut at a 60 degree angle. So once I see that my pointer is over that 60 degree mark on the compass, you're gonna just plug in the ruler with this loosen so you have some wiggle room and then simply just kind of fine tune it and tighten it down so it's pointing right at that 60 degree angle. Okay, so now that your bar is at a perfect 60 degree angle, you're gonna go ahead and take this two inch strip that you already cut and just feed it into there and you're gonna make a sacrificial cut to use as a guide piece to set up your glass. So it's important that you leave a little bit of space down here when you're cutting so that um, you have the right 
length of a cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off this piece. Now, I'm gonna run it. Now, out of all four of these edges, there's only gonna be one edge where the angle matches up with the angle created by the intersection of this bar and the ruler. So, the easiest way to remember this is just to match up the angle. So here you have what you got cut. So you'll take the glass and you'll just flip it over and then rotate it 90 degrees. And then there you go, it'll match up perfectly. So just remember to find the angle and match it up and you'll be good. Okay, so this might give you a little bit better kind of visualization of the angles matching up. So now I'm gonna bring the glass down to the ruler I'm going to take a super stop, or you can also use an omnidirectional stop. I just like using the super stop because I don't have to worry about it being at a perfect 90 degree angle because it's already at that angle. So you're going to take your flying beetle, and remember what I said before about these yellow pointers dictating uh, where the cutting head's going to go. So you're going to line the yellow pointer up with the edge of your glass. And now once it's lined up, you're gonna hold it down with one finger, bring your super stop over, and just have it go up against the edge of the glass, and then tighten it down. Okay, so I went ahead and added an extra super stop, and the reason being is that it's gonna come in handy later when we go to cut our hexagons. Now, you are more than welcome to use uh, Omni Stop here. Just make sure that you put it right against this ruler's edge so that this is a perfect 90 degree angle. So now I'm gonna slide my glass in and it's gonna stop it perfectly. I'll go ahead and score it, take the piece out, and now you have a perfect diamond. So you can go ahead and cut another one if you want. Let's break that one out too. So now you have your perfect diamonds. So from this, I'll show you how to make a hexagon. So what you'll do is you'll take your diamond and you'll feed it through here so that the point of it goes up here instead of down here. So you're just gonna basically trim off this bottom part, trim off this top part, and you'll be left with a hexagon. So I scored one side of it, now I'm gonna score the other, and it's important not to break this piece off because it'll throw off your lines. So now you're left with a perfect hexagon. All right, so I went ahead and took this two inch strip and I cut it at a 60 degree angle so now I'm gonna flip this over and slide it through. You're gonna take your flying beetle down here and where this point is, you're gonna line up the yellow pointer to it because that's where you're gonna want to cut. So once it's there, you're gonna go ahead and take your super stop with it loosened and then just line it up, and right there is pretty good. So then you can go ahead and cut it. And there you have an equilateral triangle. As always, thank you guys for watching. I hope this kind of gave you a better understanding of how the BeagleBit system works. If you have any more questions, feel free to call the number below, and we'll help you out with any sort of issues you might have. Um, also feel free to check out our website, www.creatorsbrand.com. We have a bunch of cool products on there, some that you might not know about yet. Um, we're always having some sort of deal going on, so feel free to go check out our website. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.